Hi folks, here is another uh, question about linear expansion. A common way to attach two pieces of metal together with no fastener or additional connector is called shrink fitting. One piece is heated or cooled then inserted into the other. When the two pieces reach thermal equilibrium, they are permanently joined. A steel rod has a diameter, so we have a rod with a diameter or an original length of 2.0026 centimeters and a flat plate contains a hole whose diameter is 2.000 centimeters. The rod is cooled so that it just fits into the hole. When it warms up and the, the thermal stress is going to hold the rod securely in place. By how many degrees or change in temperature should the rod be cooled in order to make this change? So this is my original length. Um, this is the change in length. The change in length is going to be the difference between the 2.0026 centimeters minus the 2.12340 centimeters. So that's going to be 0 0.12026 centimeters. So that's going to be my change in length. Um, and this is steel. So we're going to use that coefficient of linear expansion that we've been using, 12 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius. Lots of different ther thermal expansion coefficients. Depends on, remember, steel's kind of like cookies. Everybody's got a slightly different recipe. So there is definitely a range on steel. Um, the equation is the change in length is the original length alpha change in temp and we're solving this time for change in temp so change in temperature is going to be the change in length divided by the original length alpha now the nice thing about this equation is as long as the length is in the same units you don't have to convert everything to mks units so these guys are in centimeters and we can leave them in centimeters that's kind of handy the original length is this number up here 2.0026 centimeters. The, um, oh, I got that backwards. How about the change in length is 0 0.0026 centimeters. I didn't read carefully. You do that sometimes, don't you? The original length, there we go, is 2.0026 centimeters. And the coefficient of linear expansion is 12 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius. So when I do the math, let's do this beastie, 0 0.0026 divided by 2.0026, then divided by 12 times 10 to the negative sixth, and I ended up with a delta T, a change in temperature of 108 degrees Celsius. Um, let's talk a little bit for a moment about units centimeters on the top, centimeters on the bottom. Where the hay do the degree Celsius come from? Let's take a look at this. We've got centimeters um, on the top, centimeters on the bottom, and then on the bottom we have 1 over degree Celsius. So these are going to cancel. This ends up with 1 divided by 1 per degree Celsius invert and multiply by a fraction, degree Celsius over 1, and we end up with degree Celsius going from the sub-basement upstairs. That's where our 108 comes from. All right, that works out just spiffy. Let's do another one of these. A flask is filled with 1.5 liters of a liquid at 97.1 degrees Celsius. When the liquid is cooled to 15 degrees Celsius, its volume is only 1.383 liters. Neglect the contraction of the flask that is holding the liquid. Determine the coefficient of volumetric expansion for the liquid and identify it using the table that I gave you. So, the Change in volume is going to be the original volume beta coefficient of volumetric expansion times change in temperature. So the original volume is 1.500 liters. The change in volume is going to be 1.500 liters minus 1.383 liters. So let's do that subtraction. 1.5 minus 1.383, so that's 
117 liters. That's going to be my change in volume. Um, we're looking for beta. What is going to be my change in temperature? Well, it's 97.1 down to 15. So 97.1 degrees Celsius minus 15 degrees Celsius. Don't want to, don't feel like doing that in my head right this second. So I'm going to call out a calculator, 82.1 degrees Celsius. And let's now set this up. So I'm solving for beta. So beta is going to be coefficient of volumetric expansion change in volume divided by original volume divided by change in temperature. Change in volume is this number, 0.117 liters. The original volume, original volume, 1.500 liters. Change in temperature, 82.1 degree Celsius. So beta ends up being 0.117 divided by 1.5, divided by 82.1, and I end up with a wacky number. It's very, very small. I'm going to actually put this in scientific notation on my calculator. I get 9.501 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, let's look at units. Liters cancel liters. I have degrees Celsius down below. Coefficients of expansion should be per degree Celsius, so the units make sense. If I look on my table of coefficients of expansion for volume, this is a liquid. What liquid is close to that? It's very, very close to gasoline. So what's in my flask? Gasoline, you better not drink out of that flask. Ugh. OK, um, number eight. A copper kettle contains water at 24 degrees Celsius. When the water is heated to boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, the volume of the kettle expands to 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth cubic meters. What is the volume of the kettle at 24 degrees Celsius? So let's take a look at this. Um, we want to know what is the original volume. What is the original volume of the kettle? That's my question. It contains water at 24 degrees Celsius, and it's heated to boiling at 100. So the change in temperature is going to be 100 minus 24. And last time I looked, that is 76 degrees Celsius. That's my change in temp. It is a copper kettle. So I look that up on my table, and the coefficient of volumetric expansion for copper is 51 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius. That's a coefficient for copper. Um, I have that and that and that, and I am looking for, what else do I know? I know the expands um, the volume expands by, so that is going to be my change in volume, is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 5 cubic meters. Pretty easy problem. A uh, change in volume is original volume beta change in temperature. We're solving for original volume. So let's go ahead and do a little wee bit of algebra here. We're looking for original volume. Original volume is going to be equivalent to change in volume divided by beta, divided by delta t. So this is going to be equal to the change in volume, which is 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed. Beta is 51 times 10 for the negative sixth uh, per degree Celsius. That's going to go down in the basement. Where did I get that from? I had to look that up on a chart, because this is for copper. And then the change in temp is 76 degrees Celsius, 76 degrees Celsius. I have this funny feeling I'm doing algebra wrong. I'm looking for this change in volume, beta, ba, 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 change in temperature. This is per degree. What did I do? This looks funny. OK, hold on. What did I do that looks funny here? Change in volume is original volume, beta. Cubic meters, I've got, I've got, I've got, I'm having a unit problem. I'm having unit problems per degree Celsius 
and this should work out. Let's see if my math doesn't work out. I know I did my units wrong. 12 times 10 to the negative fifth times 51 to the negative sixth divided by 76 and I end up with a really stupid answer. What did I do? Oh, I did do my algebra wrong. What did I do? This should be on the bottom, shouldn't it? Yes. See, I could hear you yelling at me. Mira, you did it wrong. I heard ya, but it, I, you, but you, you're just too far away for me to hear. There we go. See, this is a classic example. If the units don't work, it's telling you that you did something goofy with your numbers. Um, I knew I was in trouble because my units were not canceling and I wasn't ending up with volume units. I had to have the degrees Celsius cancel. Anyhow, meanwhile, back at the ranch, 1.2 to the negative fifth divided by 76 divided by 51 times 10 to the negative sixth. Here we go. Point 0, 0, 0.0031 meters cubed. Hallelujah! Algebra was right. I just couldn't copy it. All right, I think we better stop and keep going later. See you then.